and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted by Lou Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch and Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at LouDolphin21 on Twitter, and on Twitch and YouTube it's LouDolphin, no digits. Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Anne's End, and Spirit Island are available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. And you can find more information on those games at Handelabra.com. Hello, hello, hello. You might notice there are some small, well, not small, this chair. This is a new chair. My beloved chair. Um, I was having a lot of issues with my older chair, so I decided to invest in a gamer chair has a pillow here on my back, has a pillow here on my head, although I typically tend to lean forward, so I'm not going to benefit from the pillow on the neck as much, but the back pillow is much appreciated. Also, the AirPods. They're not actually like Apple brand AirPods. They're cheaper ones, but I decided I wanted to invest in something that was similar to the headphones I was using, um, which were previously these, you know, standard... Uh, iPhone headphones, except they still have the audio jack because they're older ones, but uh, they work. I do have a little bit of issues uh, getting OBS to kind of recognize the audio, and sometimes um, when I, I started up the game and then I put these in and it wasn't getting the audio, it was still going to the... Uh, external speakers. I had to close the game and restart it for it to actually go to the right place. Uh, so pardon any technical difficulties involving audio. Um, hopefully it is being channeled in the right place. Uh, in my stream yesterday, these the battery in these had died uh, because I hadn't charged them fully before I started using them. I just got them yesterday. And when they died, then Slay the Spire was not sending audio anywhere, and I had to restart that game for it to actually be registered anywhere. So, uh, yeah, we might have some fun times today. Uh, this is a shorter stream, but um, hopefully nothing terrible goes. Uh, we were off last week, which means that we have two one-shots to catch up on. Uh, we did the safety margins one, we got the fine cover on that because we were bad. Last week's was free for all. We missed that one, and we have Knife After Dark today, or this week. Both will play today. Plus, I guess I have my sort of villain pattern that I'm supposed to be going through, and have not been doing a good job of doing that. We'll see if I get to that today or not. Um, next week is not the first week of May, so I should hopefully not. Uh, have to do a. Uh, a double on week and then have to do another double one shot week, but we'll see. Free for all. Bugbear slashed through a puff of mist where Fey Diamond had stood moments before. The ground shook as the naturalist and rhinoceros form collided head on with Fright Train. Magical energy crackled around the harpy as she gathered her power to contain the plague rat. Amidst all this, there was a shout. Wait, everyone, stop! There was a pause as the combatants turned to look at the source. Setbat, dangling upside down from Airman's rope, caught his breath. Has there anyone else noticed that none of us are wearing red or blue? What's up with that? This one shot requires Infernal Relics, Vengeance, Villains of the Multiverse, and Oblivion. So Fright Train, Airman, Bugbear, uh, this guy, <laughs> and Plague Rat. Biomancer? That's Biomancer. Uh, versus Night Mist, Naturalist, Dark Watch Setback, uh, this one. <laughs> Uh, bad with names right now. Akash Thria and Harpy or Dark Watch Harpy. I don't know which. And we're doing this in the Spirit Island environment, I think. Um, just gonna start it. All aboard! The fight trains are coming. I feel the evil twisting of your presence. Now feel my power. Nexus of the Void, that's the one. I'm bad with names. And this is Dark Watch Harpy, after all. Diamond is starting with Mistbound, Oblivion, 
Oblivion, not Oblivion. Planar Banishment, Tome of Elder Magic. The Naturalist has Beastial Shift, Cornered Beast, Hyperactive Senses, and the Nimble Gazelle. Dark Wedge Setback has Cash Out, Friendly Fire, Reckless Rush, and Uncharmed Life. Akash Thria has One with the Land, Primeval Germination, Scatter Seeds, and Thrashing Brambles. Dark Watch Harpy has Ancient Tome, Applied Numerology, Arcane Explosion, and Tenuous Focus. And I forgot to check what kind of game this is. It looks like it's standard. So Fright Train, uh, you know, deals the hero target with the highest three melee damage. Puts Engine of Destruction in play at the start of the game. I would like to see what that is, but it's hiding. See it like this. Uh, Engine of Destruction, increased damage dealt by Fright Train by one, increased the first damage dealt to Fright Train each turn by one. Airman, Constant Prattle is put into play. Like to see what that is. At the end of Airman's turn, discard the top card of each deck and her gameplay. Can I just be all of them at once somehow? No? Okay. Um, da -da -da, at the, we reveal the top card of Airman's villain deck. If it's one shot put to play, if not, discard it and deal the hero with the highest, with the second lowest, rather, to melee. Bugbear. Damage dealt by Bugbear is increased by the number of incapacitated character cards. Whenever Bugbear deals damage, he regains HP equals to the amount of damage dealt. He deals the hero with the highest two melee damage, and then if Blood Scent is in Bugbear's play area, it moves to the hero with the highest HP. Starts the game with Blood Scent, and Blood Scent just says, At the start of Bugbear's turn, Deal the target next to the card, three melee, unless one player discards two cards, and then move this card to Bugbear's play area. Can be destroyed. And when it's destroyed, we don't have to deal with it anymore, so that's nice. Unless it comes back into play from other effects. Biomancer. The first damage dealt to Biomancer each turn is reduced by two. At the end of Biomancer's turn, Biomancer and each flesh child regain two HP. He starts with two targets put into play. Plague Rats. He's immune to toxic damage. If there are no handlers in play, increase damage dealt by Plague Rat by two. At the end of his turn, he deals each target one toxic damage, and then he deals two handlers with the lowest HP, two melee damage each. He starts with two handlers. Cool. The usual routine is to kind of target Bugbear first. Bugbear is... Uh, Night Mist's Nemesis, Plague Rat is Setback's Nemesis, and we don't have any other innate nemeses here. But yeah, Bugbear first, because otherwise he gets the damage increase, and when he's incapped, he provides HP recovery to each one, for each villain target. Uh, Fright Train's usually easier to take out first, I guess, or afterwards. Start Fright Train's turn to hear a target with the highest HP deals themselves to toxic damage. Pretty nice if that were Night Mist, then it just redirects. Uh, if we have the Amulet of the Elder Gods. Airman's flip side, discard the top two cards of each hero deck. Biomancer's flip side, increase damage dealt two hero targets by hero targets by one. Plague Rat's flip side, at the start of Plague Rat's turn, the environment target with the highest HP is destroyed. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Arbin Adept, Duplex Patriots, Revocorp Tinker, Revocorp Neutralizer, Last Stop, Class Peaks, Damage to Akash Thria. So, okay, here's where we get to see all of them when it's on the right side. Carbon Adept destroys two hero ongoing cards, so maybe we should just don't play ongoing cards and leave Carbon Adept in play. Duplex Patriot deals two targets, two projectile damage. Real Court Tanker reduces damage dealt to Plague Rat and provides AoE, but only to hero targets. Real Corp Neutralizer increases damage dealt to hero targets and deals the hero target with the highest two lightning damage. I kind of don't like either of those. 
is we're getting one toxic damage increased by one here, and we're also getting one toxic damage increased by one here. That's a lot of AoE. If I take out the handlers, Plague Rat then has a damage increased by two, but that hurts villain targets more. Well, it hurts everyone, but also hits villain targets for more. So whereas leaving both of these out would result in four damage to all hero targets, taking them both out would result in three damage to all hero targets, but also three damage to all villain targets. The other thing is, do I even have enough damage to take out one or both? That is very likely to be true. There, we are very likely to have more non-hero targets than hero targets. There are nine versus five. If I do that, uh, I don't really get to use any offense on Naturalist's turn because Cornered Beast plus become a crocodile. And then it gets destroyed by Carbon Adept two turns later. That's... Annoying. Don't have any seeds here. What if I Oblivion on the first turn? If it reveals two fours, that would be pretty nice. Clean the board. Oblivion turn one. We'll see. Two and three. We see. Okay, so that takes out the two flesh children at least. We do two to each target. Order matters. And order is still not going to matter. So we still have the four and four happening, but we we're four turns away from that being a concern. Let's get card draw. Stop a singular deck from playing cards. Less useful in vengeance games. Herman is having all of us discard a card. Well, I think I'm gonna play two mist bounds. And well, Gazelle is easy to get back. This version of Setback has a really hard time finding tokens. I don't think Uncharmed Life is going to see much use. These all can be really great effects. This could just be a really offensive card here, to deal 2 and 2 damage to one target at the expense of hitting herself for that much. Goals herself first, so I wouldn't be able to really use this to take out, say, Evil Corp Neutralizer, which this would be in excess of damage anyway, but we would hit ourselves for 6 and then take this guy out, which would be fine. Scatter Seeds, on the other hand, would benefit from the self-damage, because it deals... It, it draws and discards based on the number of damage dealt this turn. Seeds somewhere for that to work. I think we're losing Thrashing Brambles here.
Arcane Explosion is basically another Oblivion. And what tokens do you start with? You start with three Arcanes and two Avians. So you deal two to each non-hero and then three to each target. Kind of the reverse of our Oblivion, actually. We could hold off on that for a turn, probably. Play Applied Numerology this turn, Arcane Explosion next turn. That would minimize the, the uh, self-damage. Plus, I would be able to use my Innate to... Actually, I could even play it this turn, yeah. Play two cards this turn. That happens after Playground's turn, though. That doesn't benefit us, but... It's tenuous focus here. So Tantrum was revealed and discarded. Tantrum's interesting because it's not actually detrimental to heroes unless Skyscraper is in the game. It actually helps destroy environment cards for us. It's nifty. Okay. Bit cornered beast out. Let's get the crocodile out. Damage. I have to discard a card here. I'm gonna be able to keep these two, probably. I mean, one with the land doesn't do much unless there's a seed in play, but being able to consistently move destroyed seeds into the trash and then shuffle a seed from the trash into the environment deck can keep the seed game going for us. On the other hand, Scatter Seeds moves a lot into the trash if it works. Can't play both. I'll lose one with the land. All right, Setback is going to want tokens, so let's friendly fire it up. I guess I could use Reckless Rush for tokens as well. But I didn't want to get Setup. I like Setup. Setup's better than no Setup, in my opinion. Damage happens. Lowest deals highest. Highest is Akash 3 so we don't have a Nemesis here. Actually, we do have a Nemesis. It's Harpy. Never mind. I chose correctly, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Scatter seeds. Draw four, discard four. Any seeds we draw we will get discarded. And we found one seed out of that. I'm gonna keep primeval germination. We discarded strangling roots from airmen, it seems. Put strangling roots out. Oh, we can put all of them in actually. Duh. Base power just draws a card then. Okay, so we're getting the four damage total, plus other damage instances. Another handler. 
one reduces damage to villain targets, which is unfortunate. This would take out something. Doesn't take the other one out. We no longer have a damage increase to ourselves. Now I can flip an avian, play arcane explosion, and wipe the field. Which there isn't much of the field left, but... Build up those tokens! Especially because I can reduce that. Actually, that does combo really well, doesn't it? Friendly fire plus applied numerology. Uh, sure, let's do this for a little bit. Fifteen seems like an amount that I don't want to do too much more with, so I'll, st I'll start saying no. Say yes to damage reduction. Oh. Say yes to hitting setback, apparently. Did I do this in the wrong order? Because I... Well, I'm, I can't rewind, even though this is not the current week. I gotta maintain that practice of not rewinding. I think I missed out on one damage to Plagrat because I didn't hit the handler first. But if I lose by one hit point, that was what happened. So damage increase. The end of the environment turn, the three targets with the lowest increased damage dealt by them by two. So that's Dark Watch, Setback, Biomancer, and Airman. Okay. Not play grab. Uh, right. All HP recovery by one. That could be increased by one. Okay, so what are we doing here then? Planar banishment. Get rid of some of these ongoings. Get rid of blood scent, probably. Revealed two. Constant prattle's not really doing anything. Engine of Destruction hurts... hurts Fright Train a little bit more. Just give it a constant prattle. Call forth. Move a hero ongoing card in place at the top of their deck. So it's good we got rid of constant prattle. Um It's no longer true. No longer true. I'm with cornered beast at the top. is definitely owie. What happens when you have a plus two.
Bastral shift combos well if we can change forms in the middle of it. Basically, if we start as a gazelle. Grain 3 HP, change shifts, deal 3 damage, use a power, or something like that. We could turtle for a bit, I guess. Plague Rat is dealing three to everyone right now. Maybe we just go ahead and turtle. Now that I have my deadly crocodile, let's turtle. We get another turtle. An ongoing into play. Barrel Brawn. Oh yeah, that HP recovery is also increased. Seems pretty bad. Do want to get some hit points here. I want to get some cards here. Let's remove six tokens. Long time in place. Four cards have to be discarded, so setback could probably discard something here now. Looking up is here now. Seated expectations would have been nice to have a second ago, I guess. Turn of events is here as well. Rising fortune is unlikely to be used. RP has two cards. Get, use Ancient Tome to get ongoings in play, I guess. Um, we don't need Flax Care for the moment. Akash 3 is still hurting to get seeds. Permeable Germination is probably the play right now. Um... Let's have Night Mist discard a low number card. Elder Ring sounds good. Naturalist. I think Hyperactive Senses are going to be too useful here. Let's have the person with the more cards. With the more cards. With more cards. Discard. Lose Thrashing Rambles again. Four cards have been discarded, so we should each regain two plus one. And I think I'm not gonna use this. May or may not use turn of events next turn. Might also just use looking up next turn or fumbling full or something. I don't think th uh, removing a token, I guess it's only one token, but still, I don't really like the space power that much. Shuffle a seed from the trash into the environment deck. Sounds good to me. Shuffle strangling roots in. It is not on the top of the deck. Okay, so handlers are actually coming out. So we're not being dealt three damage to everyone, but we are being dealt two to everyone. Well, two to heroes. But that's going to redirect to Naturalist, who takes zero. I accept that. Some ongoings. Let's increase this by one. More choices. 
Never you flip a token, deal damage. Seems good. Card to play an ongoing card, flip an avian. Gives me more arcane. Seems good. Start every turn to flip a token. And then deal. Yeah, things. I think it's Harpy Hex here. I already have this in my hand as well. But Harpy Hex for sure, because that enters play. And let's see. So, Savannah Nocturna is currently targeting uh, Handler, Handler, and Mr. Facsimile. Which I can't hit right now. But if I take out the Revocorp Analyst, setback gets a plus one. Or plus two? Is it plus two? Yeah, he gets a plus two, and then exceeded expectation seems ridiculous. Makes sense to hit the handler here. I'll say no to that. I guess it would only be one damage again, but... I'm trying to be careful with my HP here. The Reclusive Keeper. First time a non-environment target enters play, this card deals that target two melee damage and reduces damage dealt by that target by two. Hmm. I like that guy. But if there are three or more spirits in play, destroy this card. This card, because it is not a seed. All players agree to discard a card. Instantaneous maturation seems like it's really good here. I think we all agree to discard. I think Call Forth is to play. I don't think we're playing Astral Premonition. We're doing another Indomitable Force round. I don't think wrong time and place is going to see much use, unfortunately. It could actually combo really well with Naturalist, though. Because you only discard one token and redirect what would have been three damage. Or di re discard two tokens and redirect four damage. It'd be really good. Um, I want to keep Scatter Seeds again. I like that card. Eugen and Munin are here. I'll keep Eugen and Munin. So let's discard a four. Get Star Shield Necklace. Amulet of the Elder Gods, Elder Ring, and Star Shield Necklace. Okay, we have our amulet now. I want to reduce that by one, although it redirects anyway, but sure. Three cards. Lipso is Ra's nemesis, but Ra is not in the game. Which doesn't happen. Move one hero ongoing card from play to the top of the associated hero's deck. Uh, sure, let's move Indomitable Force to the top. <laughs> I don't think you understood what you just did there. But it was... it was good. <laughs> uh, I did not get destroyed, and I draw another one. I think I'm just turtling this game, apparently. Get another ongoing. Get another feral brawn. This damage actually does happen. So setback has a plus two, right? Yeah. 
We're gonna just deal lots of damage here. Take out the facsimile. No, I can't hit you now. Calypso is not doing anything bad here. Because we could just keep moving, uh... Just keep moving Indomitable Force to the top. I think, I think that's a keeper. Not this keeper, but it's a keeper. Kind of annoying now to get rid of Bugbear, but that was a priority at one point. Right Train is a massive wall of damage there. Was that three damages so far? Yeah, three more. Biomancer is probably just going to regain it back. HP is 18. He regains 2 plus 1. Yeah, so he would just regain it back. Probably not worth the effort then. Big Rat is currently going to be... Ooh, this is damage. Probably okay to do that. If he doesn't hit himself. Yeah, we'll hit Plague Rat with this. Question is, do I take out the Handler? Nah, I think I do, and then Plague Rat deals more damage to the villains. Probably just Airmen. Always hit the main targets. I didn't hit Biomancer there, but... Biomancer's tricky. I have another Exceeded Expectations. Kill each target two, which is redirected for zero. I guess order slightly mattered, but... We used up setbacks minus two. What? He played a card that also provided HP recovery? Yeah, so he actually would have been, like, even if I had hit him, he would be at max HP right now. So actually, I can't play Scatter Seeds right now because I will not be dealing myself damage. So I will Instantaneous Maturation instead. Assuming that it actually does something. Okay, yeah, it does. It's not one of those, if damage is dealt this way, clauses. Put it on top of the environment deck and then play the top card of the environment deck. Either play or shuffle. Well, fortunately, I would have to actually shuffle. Um, minus two. That's going to. I could play Noxious Pod and then hopefully find another card I'd be more willing to play other than Scatter Seed. Only gonna be two card draws, but. Oh, wait. Reduce damage dealt by the naturalist by two? Doesn't seem like uh, that's the intended effect, but okay. It's the same as Stun Bolt. Hmm. Okay. Creeping Mold. Which would just pro provide an ongoing destruction, which we do need. Or we play the top three cards of the environment deck, which might play as Strangling Roots. But it could get rid of Savannah Nocturna. No damage will be dealt this way. Destroy an environment card when a non-target enters play this way. 
When a target plays that way, when a target is played that way, it deals one target three toxic, but... Oh, it's only the first time. It already happened. We play... Accelerate. There's not an environment on top. Savannah Nocturna was destroyed. Reduce. Raid Estuary. I want to keep the keeper. Yeah, I think we destroyed Jade Estuary. Serpent. Cool. Whoa. Cool. Uh, three damage waste there, unfortunately. That's immune to this. Top card is not a C. Really need to get rid of the Feral Bronze. Somehow. Oh, we have a Planner Banishment. That gets rid of the Feral Bronze, I guess. I'm gonna hit Fright Train with this. It's possible that we take Fright Train out before Bugbear. Hopefully it's okay. I got Burning Bright. Increase all fire and cold by one. Melee becomes cold. Projectile becomes fire. Want to keep the spirits. Spirits are helpful. Want to shuffle something in? Let's put a creeping mold in. No more handler. On the other hand, ow. Gonna be able to keep up this turtle for too long, unfortunately. Unin. Just damage Delta Naturalist. What ongoings would we still want to get? Swift summoning? Box care, of course. Uncontrollable flock, which can be really good. So we have RP Hex as well as being able to flip tokens here. I don't have a card to play, so I guess I'm just gonna ancient. Increase by one. Two Harpy Hexes and a Conjured Aura. If we will not have three or more avians, so that's probably okay. Do that. And... Probably want to flip. Flip an avian. Keep the... Keep the, uh... Arcanes. Reduce all damage dealt by one. It's not a seed. And we get hit points. All right, so... Actually, we might be able to keep the turtle game going then, because now 
Naturalist has a minus three. Rebuilt to survive. Over five or more damage we dealt, reduce it by two. Basically, his own shielding wins. It's the tidy whitey's card. Indeed. All right, we got to get rid of the feral bronze because now it's a minus three to the bug bear. Uh, that's not planar banishment. That's planar banishment. I keep wanting to right click to not play a card. Because I'm so used to Slay the Spire. So I don't think Rebuilt to Survive really matters that much. I mean... Uh, I mean, Freight Train's at 7 right now. But now that we got rid of the Feral Bronze, we want to target Bugbear more. would be dealt damage. Prevent it. And I think I will move an Indomitable Force to the top of a deck. I think I will play Indomitable Force. <laughs> We're cheesing this fight, apparently. He prayed, didn't do anything. Destroy each environment target with three or fewer, then regain HP equal to the number of targets destroyed this way. Alright, now it's a looking up turn. Gives me tokens. Now we just focus on Bugbear. and just put healing pollen out. Naturalist can't really do anything other than turtle because he has a minus bajillion. Let's shuffle a strangling roots in. Top card is not a seed. All right, we have a handler. And now because of that, in the minus one, no damage will be dealt here. Never mind, damage is dealt there. Normally Vengeance games are super fast paced and you're trying to overwhelm the villains. But thanks to our turtling methods, we can actually not go fast and still win. Like, I think it's a victory. It's a very slow victory, but I think with all of the effects we have here... A victory now. This is a bit unfortunate. Still hit Fire Train, no? There's no Nemesis here, because Oblivion... The Oblivion Nemesis symbol came in after everything. So that's a no there. Flip an avian. Destroy a card to flip a control token, draw a card, and use a power. A token for one damage is a good deal. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't. Damage is just going to redirect to naturalist. And again. And again. <laughs> I 
nothing here though. And uh, this won't actually work here. There's no reason to really flip a control token anyway. Blocks care. Swift summoning. Because I am getting... This is my play power. Power from here. I can also use swift summoning this turn. Already in play. Most of these are already in play, right? Uncontrollable Fox is not in play. Steve Swift summoning. Reveal the top card of one hero deck. Play a card revealed this way. Nightmist still needs to get super set up. She has the cards, she just can't play them. Or hasn't been able to play them because she's had many other things she's needed to do. Naturalist can't do much offense here. Setback could do a bunch of unfortunate things. Knockwash 3 I could use with more setup. Reveal the top card of two hero deck. Night Mist, Akash Thria. Mists of Time and Accelerate Nature's Order. Both of these are one shots. I think we accelerate. Biomes are indestructible. That's not a seed. Should we just get all the biomes in play then? What are what's still in here? You can combo phosphor fen, which deals damage with eternal timber, which reduces damage. Hmm. Tempted to just actually go super biome here, but eh, let's super biome. Let's make this game interesting. That is not a seed. That is not a seed. Does that discard all other cards? Discard the other reveal cards. I should have destroyed that then. I'm gonna discard all my seeds. Deal damage here. Prioritizing bugbear. Because then I can damage setback. I don't want to reduce it. I do not want to redirect it. There's a seed. You get a bit annoyed <laughs> with this after a while. Turn it on. Reduce damage dealt by those targets. Reduce damage dealt by Bugbear, for sure. I want Plagrat to deal damage. 
Right Train does have a plus one. I don't know which airman's going to try to do. Let's reduce Biomancer, I guess. I don't know. And there goes my seeds. Destroy one hero target, two or fewer. Okay, let's start getting stuff out. I don't actually need Amulet that much. Redirecting would be cool, I guess, but... I don't need Master of Magic because I haven't taken that much damage either. I don't need any of these things. Uh, let's put the Amulet out, I guess. And I have the option of using it. Do I want to use it to... Hit Bugbear for two? Eh. Probably want to use Oblivion's a little more, too. Player must put a card from hand on top of their deck. I mean, Naturalist is just currently in this loop of Indomitable Force. And he's drawing them back anyway. One player must put a card for man on top of their deck! I don't want to put the second Indomitable Force on top, because then I will not have one to play. I guess we could just put another card from hand. And then we put Indomitable Force on top. Then we play Indomitable Force. And then we draw the cards we put on top of the deck. Good job, Naturalist. Destroy one of Bugbear's cards by Easy Prey. You're at full HP despite all of our bestest efforts. I don't want to discard the top cards of each deck. Wait, no, that's not Akash Thria. Shuffle. Seed. Yeah, because right now, the environment's at a point where its deck is empty. At the end of my turn, I can put a seed from the trash into the deck, and then that basically gets played immediately. So we basically want that to happen. Not fumbling fooling. Reckless rush. Get the tokens. And here, let's turn that back off for a second. Shuffle that deck well.
It's the self damage part. This can redirect. Fourteen tokens. So I should have kept the redirect card. Damaged up by Ripple Blade. All right, so Ripple Blade, number of cards in Biomancer's trash. Yep, that one needs to go, I guess. Your trash has six cards, so you'd be dealing six damage. Minus three to Naturalist. As the earth turns. Cute. I could go remember all game and then turn it off when I want it. Sure. And there's gone. I think it's actually easier to just check that off uh, every time. <laughs> like, basically the same. I'm trying to think if there's an order that makes sense, or not makes sense, but if anything matters here, because there's just a bajillion targets here, but there's no retaliations, there's no redirects. Other than to Naturalist, who's taking zero. But so should be fine. Oh, we can amulet, actually. Amulet for two? I actually kind of want Elder Ring, because we really need an extra punch past the minus one in the environment. And currently the environment is only going to play seeds for the rest of the game until a villain says otherwise, I guess. Catchable was destroyed. We just need to reduce the number of targets so that we stop seeing all of these effects. Or we take out Plague Rat, and then we see less effects, I guess.
we do basically the same thing we did last turn. Don't get thing. Any ongoings left in here? Swift summoning. Swift summoning twice. No, I can't use it twice. I need to somehow deal more than one damage. Why do you have all this pink stuff? You don't need pink stuff. forth. You have one relic left in your deck, unfortunately. Wrangling roots. Discard my entire deck, I guess. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to get my arcane explosion back. It's a seed. Serpent is still not at max HP. I think you want to keep those cards. actually use cultivation though because then the environment starts playing cards again but as the earth turns is really good oh but it actually doesn't it, it makes environment play cards anyway which we kind of want to keep our stasis here so we do not agree to discard a card
have three fours. We have three threes. We have three twos and a one. I think I'm going to do Elder Ring before I consider Oblivion. Now I will deal stated damage. And we'll redirect this. really have a need for all these tokens though. Karmic Retribution is going to be a big hit. I also don't have the means, don't have a reason for HP yet either. Alright, so we still have three fours, but now we only have one three in the deck. So Oblivion is going to be really nice. This is a naturalist nemesis. Increased damage dealt by this card by two. Oh no. Oh. Why is equity in the shower? It's probably a prison shower. Imagine equity dealing plus two damage and still not being able to deal damage. There was no environment target with two or fewer, or three or fewer. All right, we are profiting on Bugbear at least. Oh yeah, that's actually dealing damage. But it doesn't matter. back to the tokens I had before I used Indomitable Force, or not that, but the card that did a thing. Actually don't want Naturalist to take this. It's six. Minus two. Oh, you don't have a minus two. Minus one, minus one, minus one is three, and that's half your HP, but but Akash 3 has a lot of hit points. Are you at max HP? Or Three... Oh, that would still be zero to Naturalist. Elis? Of 
Or Rakash 3, yeah. So this is five plus two. I think we just let this go to Harpy. First time I'm dealt damage, I may flip a token. I don't want to. Why? I don't have uncontrollable flock yet. Oh, but it doesn't. Yeah, no, I don't want to. It's not going to do really anything. Here's where I do turn this back on. Iron Mists is an easy discard. Progressing. Almost at single digits. He is at single digits. There was a button to fast forward. Fine, we'll fast forward. Okay. You got Freight Train? Oh, we can't. Well, he's almost down. What did he do on his flip side again? Nothing. Nothing. On the other hand, Bugbear deals more. Do you have anything for your tokens yet? No. Cash out for 20 card draw, I guess. Undo that. So annoying. The question is, do I reveal a card from Night Mist? Don't want to reveal a four. Unless it's Oblivion. That's the last three. Now we know that half our deck is fours. Take out Freight Train. Yay! One down!
We'll just do it again. Oh no! What's there? bunch of zeros. So we'll fast forward through this one. Bugbear doesn't have a turn, or not Bugbear, Fright Train doesn't have a turn. Alright. Oblivion! Okay. Deal the smaller damage to each target, or the bigger one? This is five... I'm two to naturalist each time. Yeah, that's a lot of damage to naturalist. I believe Bugbear dies to the four hit, right? Because that was increased by one ultimately, so we don't want to redirect to Bugbear. Direct a Biomancer, and then that uses up a minus one. Or we already use up a minus one here, but do as many hits to bug to Biomancer now. here. Slumbering Serpents. Oh, he'll survive. Still not going to be at max age. Saying yes, this turn actually do anything, or is this per target? Oh, no. Okay. Or yeah, I mean yes, it does do something, but it's not per target like I thought. Okay. Uh, so we got to get through the seeds. What is Bugbear's flip again? Each villain target regains one. Okay. Alright, Bugbear's gone, so now we can actually unleash our full fury. I actually want to leave Airman in. If I take out Airman, I lose Calypso, and if I lose Calypso, then I will not be Infinite Turtle. Then again, 
we're winning, so who cares? So how much can I hit Biomancer before his turn? not Calypso's effect. Wound. I don't have like powers that deal offense here. I think I use exceeded expectations. At least gets past the damage reduction on the Biomancer, and then I can looking up to hit him. And remove one, two, three, four, five, six tokens. Yeah, I can hit Night Mist, and Night Mist can redirect it. at half HP. And he's going to be at full HP? Okay, fine, whatever. Running out of cars. 
Damn it. For, for some reason, I thought that was gonna be two. It would actually profit hit points still, but nope. Actually, no, there will still be two at the end of the turn. Okay, he's gonna regain 10, but it'll be at 17, so it's actually a profit on hit points from, you know, his max HP. Fast forward through more minutes. Hey, serpent. matters Arcane Explosion was what I wanted. But we are losing Calypso now, but Airman's also going down. It didn't matter. We're losing our tanks. But even though we had three avian tokens up, it's still zero to all heroes. Look at this safe explosion. Environment targets are gone as well. Enlightenment's not going to reveal anything. with the land. Two hit points. And a bunch of zeros.
bunch of zeros. Getting all the flesh children back. Boy. The annoying thing about that turn is that all these are back. So we have Carbon Adept back. That one doesn't matter. That one doesn't matter. Yeah, and Repla Blade, who uh, thinks sick damage. And my Oblivion, which is bad. Gonna play these cards. Now, for the first time in a long time, Indomitable Force was destroyed. In fact, it was never destroyed. For the first time ever, Indomitable Force has been destroyed. Got two more turns of Indomitable Force. Still use it. This is not good for much. I mean, he is good for a lot, but... Not set up right now. We're also losing two ongoings. We do have a lot of ongoings to destroy at least. As an effect is good. I mean, it's slightly suicidal, but it's really good. I can one shot Biomancer basically. destroy stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that's not really doing anything right now. Just get rid of this. <laughs> so we have to stop hitting the don't do this effect. And he's going to be at 17 HP after this round, too. So in the end, we have not profited <laughs> from last turn. Oh, man. Stop this already. I mean, Blackus Flora.
Now the handler means nothing happens. Try any number of seeds. Like all of them? All the seeds? Let me toggle this for a second, because I don't want naturalists to be hitting this. Uh, otherwise, Mists of Time, which then puts these two cards in the deck, which would actually make my Oblivion not bad. You also get all of these counter effects, which that does nothing. Hit points. Target with three or fewer. Currently no one. Ongoing or environment card. Environment card or target with three or fewer. Ongoing or environment card. Hit points. There aren't even that many ongoing cards. In fact, there are no villain ongoing cards. You'd be destroying the biomes. Which it's probably okay. Just get rid of both of these. We don't need the minuses anymore. We need the pluses. Yeah, we need the minuses. Or, not the minuses. We need the pluses. Now that bugbear's gone. For some reason, I thought I had another set of damage here. Well, let's go ahead and draw the cards. Stuff is happening. <laughs> Do not have a target with three or fewer. I consider making the villain HP go down. <laughs> And look, now I can actually damage things. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so powerful to be able to ping things now. My deck is empty. Oh, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, yeah, whatever. Thrashing Brambles is here! Okay. I still want to be an all thing considered. And HP is going down. Naturalist will be taking damage from all the redirects. So it might be worthwhile to not do that. See what seeds would we be okay with destroying here? Uh that can go away. They're all gonna get destroyed anyway, but Harpy can take the damage. There's three I can take the damage. Set back. Take the damage. Everything else, we'll just take the damage, I guess. <laughs> now we can redirect this one. Five damage. It is so nice being able to deal lots of damage at once, huh? If only I did this from the beginning of the game. Would have been a game changer.
think we just go for it. We no longer are redirecting damage, oh no! There's high risk behavior. Finally! John, you stacked the deck terribly. Also, Tempersonation is here on the turn that I decided to destroy uh, damage reduction means. Whoops. Kill tempers? No, I got rid of him. I could have done it with, uh, I guess, um, thing. Oh, well. Biomance is gone, guys! Finally! Now we're hitting ourselves harder, apparently. Whoops. Environment has too many cards. It has 27 cards. Psst. All right, we won. Not a surprise there, but you know. One. Pretty easy game. It is nine o'clock, but let's try the spike game. Knife after dark. He was just the boy next door. The old man smiled. Hi, well, hello there, Jack. I didn't know it was hockey season. Jack's gaze was disarming. Hey, can I borrow a knife? A deadly curse, a deranged killer, a not so small town in tears. Knife After Dark, coming to theaters this summer. 
This one shot requires Rook City and Oblivion. And it's Spite in Rook City with uh, this Wraith, Darkwatch, Fixer, this Haka, and this Capitan. Or uh, Commodora, that one. I'm having a bad time with names today. Can't we get along? I just want to share with everyone, you and your friends especially. I've tracked you this far and I won't let you hurt Rook City anymore. We have... Oh yeah, Rook City, Wraith, with Sleuth. With Grappling Hook, Impromptu Invention, the Mega Computer, and Trust Fund. Dark Watch Fixer with Bloody Knuckles, Overdrive, Tire Iron, Toolbox. Extreme Prime Warden's Haka, who can redirect and regain hit points off of that. Elbow Smash, Elbow Smash, Haka a Battle Mare. Badora, Curse of the Black Spot. And deal damage and discard a top card of the deck. With Chronological Sweet Spot, Concordant Helm, Flintlock and Cutlass, and Take Time. And this is Base Spite. And he deals damage, he regains that much HP. That feels like a familiar mechanic. At the end of the villain turn, the top card of the villain deck is played, then Spite deals the hero target with the highest HP, 3 energy damage. At the start of the villain turn, if there are 5 drug cards in play, Spite flips. On the flip side, whenever a villain card would enter play, instead Spite deals each hero target other than the hero target with the lowest HP, 1 projectile damage. Which kind of sucks because all his drugs are terrible. And the victim we're starting with is the Good Samaritan. And he played Potential Psychic. And he's destroying a victim. Definitely not Potential Sidekick. But we're getting Innocent Bystander now. He has no drugs in play, that's good. I do not want to put you under the safe house. Not want to put you under the safe house. I generally don't bother with the safe house unless he's about to flip, in which case I do put everything under the safe house, but there's kind of no reason to do it when he has a card that just says, take them all out. Take them all out! So, minus ones on spites? As much as possible? I believe so. That's kind of the default strat against Spite. Reduce his HP recovery and reduce his counter effects. Mega Computer has a lot of things. Toxic Sludge deals damage. Falling Statuary deals irreducible damage. Scum and Villainy is villain damage. We don't have an ongoing environment to destroy. Could draw lots of cards, try to get another impromptu invention. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. See if we can get to the second stun bolt, or infrared eyepiece, which is decent. Threat jab, which is great. Utility belt, which is good when we have a second stun bolt. Probably want to keep the grappling hooks, though, because the environment could do terrible things. Inventory barrage is a million years away from being useful. As I said, Mega Computer only basically helps against Toxic Sludge. So solo villain games are less chaotic than multi-villain games. Because at least we get all of our actions before the next villain turn. Now the question is, do we start playing tools and styles? We don't have any style. We have a tire iron that's kind of sad. It doesn't even work well in this environment. It takes out Ambitious Racketeer slightly faster, I guess. Uh, I think we play Toolbox and we destroy Toolbox. And we try to draw things with Toolbox. Priest Gun is okay. Meditation gives me a style. I think we need to redirect just yet. Redirecting from Wraith could be good to avoid the Nemesis damage. Keep in 
might as well just deal damage to him. Let's do the helm. Get it in play early. Now, discarding a drug is not good, right? If this card would be put into the trash, put it in play instead, that's not good. Let's discard the top card of Rook City because John clearly set up this environment to be terrible. Falling statuary, oh no. The bottom card, because my trash is empty. Oh, we get Dr. Tremata now. I accept that. Scum and Villainy, which plays a villain card, or Toxic Sludge, which deals damage. I will put Toxic Sludge on top. Hero with the lowest is Wraith, which is Nemesis. Not do that. Cards. And we get two drugs. Destroy all environment cards. And the power one, which sucks. Power one. The worst one. So now powers are very much a game of can we afford it or not. Which we need a second stun bolt for it to really start being good. Do not have that second stun bolt yet. So I want to get eyepiece, micro targeting computer, and utility belt out in some order. We know that Toxic Sludge is the top card of the environment deck. I'm gonna save that until he has his plus one, which he doesn't have right now. micro targeting although he heals back two of it so I probably shouldn't have done it so fixers probably not gonna use a power is there an equipment here there's impromptu inventions here. That's sad. Now the mint is on the line. Yep, mint is on the line. We probably want... Never remember which one it is. Probably want Riveting Crane. So that it doesn't have that minus two, but it's not there yet. And Hoist Chain would eventually be a nice one because it would combo with Stun Bolt and we'd just be in a winning state ultimately. I'll go for Riveting Crane.
There's hoist chain. So two, uh, we have a stun bolt and a hoist chain. We have two minus one effects, so that's pretty good. Environment cards will be constantly destroyed. We probably want to do the redirect from Wraith, but we still don't have Taomoko, but... But at least ensure that even after... Yeah, we'll at least ensure there's no Nemesis damage on Wraith, I guess. Hit points are still high, though. It is going to result in a damage to Haka and a hit point to Spite and then discards here. Although Haka would... Actually, no, that's not the redirect one, so... You play Dominion in any case. Most likely Spite's going to heal to full HP. I think I just don't bother here. Not discard, do not discard, draw two. So. I want to play chip shape probably. We don't have discard effects other than rudder, which we don't really care for yet. I would probably rather. Toxic Sludge than anything else, even though it's going to be five damage to everyone. I, mean, I guess, like, what are the worst things? This card could play an extra card when it's destroyed. It does provide a plus one. Will affect two spite plays. We could also get Tony Taurus. Scum and Villainy is also going to provide a card play. Yeah, five of these cards provide a villain card play. I want to minimize card plays for the moment. I want to discard from Spite's deck. I don't want to discard from any other deck. I do not want to play the top card of the villain deck. Smoke bombs is nice. That's basically the one nice one. We have another drug. And that's why we never do things. Or never do things with victims. Forced entry is too strong. So if Fixer is going to use Hoist Chain, which means he's going to use the space power, we're going to need to destroy something. I guess we could destroy Dominion or, or Mare. Probably Mare. 
you could just then start using the innate on Wraith or something. Smoke bombs would also at least do something here this turn. No damage was dealt. Second Dominion out. Have to do this per se. Do it. Ground pound is good. Not want to do that? I guess I could. I would draw a card off of it. Not all couples feel they need a second dominion, but then you have it. I still have not watched uh, the show that, that that's from. I forget what it is. Slightly tempted to do chronological sweet spot. Arrested development, yeah. We don't have the drug that puts cards from play back into hand. Which one is that? It's yeah, this one. When we get that one, Chronological Sweet Spot would be pretty good because we can just keep moving it back into my hand and we get free one-shots. Oops. Falling out of my ear. Your teleporter is probably okay. Feels damage. Like the damage. Not know what Rook City has in store. Timeless treasure. Move scum and villainy? Okay, I will accept scum and villainy. It's not one I want to see in play. Moment from my trash. Ardoha figurehead. Uh, probably want that. Probably want that a lot. That's not really going to have an effect, except it does get it does play a card when destroyed, so that's sad. Second stun bolt is here. I don't have utility belt in play though. There's the minus two drug. And we're getting all the drugs. All right, it's happening. All five drugs are in play. That means we're going to start moving cards from play back into our hand, so Chronological Sweet Spot might be used. Let's 
someone needs to discard three cards. Because... Wait, when does this trigger? Yeah. So the potential sidekick is not going to be used anymore. Cards are never destroyed, so we don't need to keep limited. There's not really any need for a grappling hook, actually. We'll have someone else do that one. Put out second stun bolt. I'll need to do utility belt next turn, so Wraith is not going to return a card to hand. damage, but damage delta spite is reduced by two on the first blow, wherever that one is. And he's currently not irreducible. Probably want to save charge, although, I mean, it would make the hoist chain deal more damage. Not really another play here that makes sense. I could double overdrive. I would have to destroy two cards. We could destroy both dominions, I guess. We have to be mindful of the fact that we need to move cards back into play, or back from play, or whatever. Trash has five equipments. Not ones I want, though. Wraith Trash has 12 equipments. Not really the exciting ones. Well, I mean, they're all exciting, but uh, we would rather impromptu invention than TBH. I could play and destroy Bloody Knuckles, yes. Yeah, I think I'll just do that. I was trying to do double hoist chain, but I don't think it's going to work without getting a lot of our setup gun. I guess we do have a lot of setup, but... The unfortunate thing is that he is dealing one point of damage here. Good ground pound, I guess. Because starting next turn, he will have three minus ones. Then he's under lock. Savage mana has no utility here. Literally none. None of these will happen. Except maybe Spite will be at one hit point at some point. There are a lot of cards I still want to play, though. Find the figurehead on Fixer. Makes it so I could charge.
Do you have one shots that allow you to play cards? Yes. Oh, I was gonna... Oh, I did do that, okay. The Good Samaritan needs to go under, but we can do that on the environment turn. Because that has to be done on the environment turn. All right, we'll do the sweet spot. We'll do it. It's happening. Oh, Ground Pound is actually a bad play right now, by the way, because now he's not doing himself damage with Safe House. Whoops. Whoops. Damage Delta Spite is super irreducible. And that was the only one shot played. Well, bye, Good Samaritan. And an innocent bystander that we can't do anything with. And no reason to do that. I can't deal himself damage because I'm an idiot. And just take ground pound back. He now has a minus three. At most he's dealing one. Yeah, we take ground pound back. Take chronological sweet spot back. Did that say Twisting Back Alleys was destroyed exclamation point? Apparently, Twisting Back Alleys destruction is so, so exciting! Twisting Back Alleys was destroyed! Yeah! Woo! All right. We don't need smoke bombs at this point, then. I'll still use it. But now it's just a war of attrition here. Are three minus ones right because Armin's not going to play more than one card. And you only ever deal one, you deal two, but you deal two with your uh, reactionary thing here. But with a minus three, that would be enough. So I don't need to overdrive here. I want to get Harmony, but Harmony's hard to get. Two equipment cards here. Three equipment cards here.
I think I just... Let's salvage yard. It's some equipment's back. Lots of cards. We'll play it twice, sure. Destroy Haka's stuff. He only has 17 cards in hand. So what's the one card left in your deck? If it's Harmony... No, it's Riveting Green. How do we still not have Tomoko? Taiha out. <laughs> is Tomoko still in here? It is. I'm not gonna use a power though. <laughs> to put a card out for uh, Spite to return to hand or something. Right, what's in my deck still? Question is what I'm gonna do. Actually, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. The card, Harness Anomaly. Shuffle a card from the trash into its deck and put the top card of the deck into play. The worst that happens is we get a Riveting Crane that is a duplicate of what's already in play. At best, we get um, Harmony, which is what I want. Oh no, Riveting Crane is in play. Riveting Crane was destroyed! Exclamation point. Tragic. Oh, but then chronological, chronological sweet spots, then you can reveal Harmony and discard it. Dang. Dang. Well, I guess I put the figurehead out. This card fixer. This card Rook City. Vicious Racketeer, good. One likes him. Fixer has the plus one, so he doesn't need any extra stuff in order to deal damage to spite with charge or something. We didn't use Haka's power this turn, did we? He has a minus four. There's no way that he's damaging... ...damaging Wraith here. I, mean, I guess technically Blighted Streets is in play, but it's gonna get destroyed before Wraith is hit, I think? Yeah, Mind Fires first. Yeah. And there's a bunch of nothing!
Okay. A lot of cards that aren't going to do much. Oh. I guess... I guess the first one was minus three. If I wanted that smoke bombs, probably. Oh, well. I don't actually want to use my power thing. I guess if I play toolbox, I can still use my power. I want to draw the harmony. Now he only has a minus three is the thing. I did. There's a there's a thing with these headphones where if I tap it a certain way, it actually yeah, it just lowered volume when I did that. But the problem is that it keeps falling out of my ear. My left ear is very bad at holding headphones in. So I guess that's why the volume went down, because of course it did. I wasn't sure if it was going off on stream, but I can see on the volume thing that it's definitely higher now that I turned it back up. Okay, uh, do, 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 do. There's not really anything that works. Dominion, sure. And we'll do this. Oh, it didn't affect the stream. Never mind. Never mind. I just noticed that Rook City got super quiet, and I thought it was like it fading out, but then I realized that. Um. that it doesn't, it doesn't fade out unless it's the uh, soundtrack fading out. Not doing this. I am doing this. Ruttering. Can't do double plot. Okay, we got the figurehead on Fixer. Sweet spot. Just sweet spot. We'll do this now. What I want to do. Scum and villainy is gone. I don't have the card. I guess is it the plot? It's the plot that lets me look at the bottom card of my deck. Doesn't really matter. I have basically most of my cards right now. Impromptu invention! Woo! Are there even equipments in my deck? There's an infrared eyepiece or two, apparently. Now I can do smoke bombs. Charge. This is the turn where things happen. Now Moko was discarded. Oh no. Hey, we're getting lots of equipments. And a one shot. Is there an empty deck that I can force a play with? Almost. Well, punish the weak is fine. 
And also, your deck is itself almost empty. And up, up. I can see it on screen, actually. Oh yeah, it's not affecting the stream at all, because it still playing it. Never mind. I can see it. It's entirely muted on my end. So how do I raise it? Is it the other ear that raises it? Yeah. Okay. So I have to not touch this part if I'm trying to adjust. The problem is it's like... Actually, I see what happened. Oh, it's in my ear. <laughs> this is only slightly gross. There's the ear piece, and then there's also a plastic thingy. And I, the plastic thingy fell off, and I think that was what was holding it in place a little bit more. It was get, getting a little bit of... of, uh, support. But since it fell off, it was not staying in as well. Okay. So do we want Taomoko? And try for Taomoko. Not that we need Taomoko, but that is at least something that does something, maybe. Not really. Doesn't even do anything. I want to shuffle there. Could try to get another impromptu invention play, I guess. Nope. Commodore is actually not one who wants to draw. Actually, everyone has a bajillion cards. No one really wants to draw here. So I I'm 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 starting to believe that we win. Oh boy, Tony Taurus. And then zeros. Amadora has twenty five cards in hand. just win. Not sure yet. He's still at 20. It might be rough. Oh, he's at 16 now. Yeah, it's victory. even have the ability to deal damage. Oops. I 
I guess I keep one card that deals damage so that he could potentially win off of something, I don't know. I'll keep Rampage. Which of these million cards do I discard? He's up five. We got Tomoko. I think we win now that we got Tomoko. Is minus six damage enough? Have we gone too far? Okay, he's only at minus two now, so I might need to use throat jab so that he doesn't kill me. Okay. That should be a mint. It's a mint. Man, that was so easy. Alrighty. Well, since I now know I can lower this volume and it doesn't affect the stream, I can lower it. It was feeling a little loud right now. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your stay. We are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. to deliver to you some strategically minded gameplay. Hopefully you, um... Got some insight into how to cheese the villains. We had basically two great cheese games in here. Um, definitely could have probably played the first one a little bit harder, especially after we got Bugbear out. We needed the extra damage boost to get Biomancer out. But sometimes you just don't want to have to worry about it. Especially when, you know, some of your characters are at six hit points. Not in this game, but Spite's... The only way I know how to play Spite is to give him a bunch of damage reductions because he just has too many retaliations, too many damage instances, too many damage increases. Well, only one, but a lot of damage instances with a plus one is pretty bad. Spite's definitely one of my least favorite villains, and I'm sure that is a shared sentiment among many people in the Sentinels community. 
And to an extent, that's probably the desire, but I don't think it's a thematic dislike, more of a tactical dislike, honestly. Anyway, uh, check out the other streams we have on this channel. Every Monday at 5, we have Luck of the Seamus with Seamus the Hug Monster. Every Tuesday at 7 is John and sometimes Jeremy, who like to demo content before it is publicly available. Uh, Handle Lover Live is the stream, I forgot to say that. <laughs> Uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. is Dolphin is Die with yours truly. Friday at 1 p.m. is the Sentinels Workshop Dev Stream with John. Saturday at 7 p.m. is Spirit Island Saturdays with sometimes myself, sometimes John, sometimes Seamus, and by sometimes I mean usually, as well as sometimes you if you claim the um, uh, be a guest on Spirit Island Saturdays point to lobber reward on Twitch, just 20,000 points, and you can get yourself a spot on that stream. And every Sunday at 6 p.m. is Tales from the Archive with another letdown. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse, bottom of the deck, bottom of the ninth, one deck dungeon, uh, Aeon's End, and Spirit Island are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. You can find more information on those games at handlobber.com. But thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your stay. I'll see you around later. Uh, listen to some ice cream truck music, I guess. All right, have a good night. Uh...